What I need to do is I need to clean what's called the coffin right there. That's the main folder-like filter system. And I'm going to clean that manually. First, like every good rule, I need to clean up my workspace here. You just don't want stuff falling into your filter system once you start to do any kind of work. I realized I hadn't cleaned this up anywhere near enough. This is a massive filter. I had all sorts of stuff still left on top. All right, this hasn't been opened in around five years. So I'm opening it up. Keep in mind that later versions of this have a hinge system. The older ones like mine, 16 years old as of this recording, don't. So you have to have something to prop it up. All right, that's what I suspected. I suspected two things. First off, you see all the sludge that it has gathered. So the filter is pretty overwhelmed. I also see worms in here, and you can see a bunch over here that have been attracted to it, that have been coming in from the ground there. And the reason I knew there were worms is I could see worms were in this system. All right, at one point I spent $500, I think it was, to have a septic expert come by and to do this. And it's nothing more than gently spraying in a cone or shower, whatever pressure it takes to get all the sludge off and to push it back down into the other tank. You can see here these filters are pretty sensitive and if you use too much pressure, you're gonna tear right through that uh, filter, what's often called a file filter system. And I'm probably going to have to use a little bit more pressure here. My son just asked if this was supposed to happen. See that right there is draining from cleaning that up here. Again, that's my point. You want to take all of that and get all of that sludge drained back into here so you can let the sump pump do its dirty work as opposed to what clearly is a weak filter system. This has been very slow going. You can see here where I've generally been able to clean in and around the filters in this first part but it's just so thickly caked here. All right, you can see here what happens between the row I've cleaned and the row I haven't. Now let me do this and then stop. The row I've cleaned right there that's white, you can see that the water goes down through the filter as it should. And the septic sludge here blocks it from going through the filter and it has to eventually run off the side. You can see right here the white part, it's already the water soaked through properly. But here it hasn't. So again, this is an indication where this sludge is built up and probably causing the backup that I'm experiencing. This was a lot of work, which you can see it looks so much better and I had to get a bit more aggressive with the hose than I prefer. Now keep in mind this is just PVC pipe um, that's laid here so you can see underneath I still need to get these rows um, and this one here too so you can see so let's just space this out here you know I, I, I did a better job there and I got that one much better so still some work and this just goes there. Hit the first button from the top. Okay, that's how that works. This just kind of dumbly sprays. It hits the top of this. 
and then any matter falls back onto those filters and then the water drains down accordingly. So that's how that works. All right, here is how we expect this to look. This was not the way I wanted to spend a Sunday afternoon. Clearly in between those rooms right there, I'd like a cleaner. If anybody has any ideas how to do that, I'm all ears. But with a hose and several hours, that is the best I can do. And then of course, now we've pumped everything that was there into here. And we see that this tank is virtually clean, although there's a couple things that I think have spilled in down there, a couple small rocks. The sump pump will not pick them up, but I really don't like having them in there. So I'm ready to now close both of these back up and hope that that was the fix.